we're going to talk to Elodie now about the Indoor World Cup that's uh, hopefully going to take place uh, at the beginning of February. Um, Elodie, Elodie Picard, uh, Picard from Belgium. How excited are you at the prospect of an Indoor World Cup at home in Liège? Yeah, we are uh, very excited, uh, of course, because it's in Belgium and we already organised some uh, tournament before. Like, uh, I think three years ago, we had the European Cup in the B division. And we, we did an amazing tournament. We were first and in front of the home court. It's, yeah, it's always nice to, to win uh, some games. Um, then we played also the, the World Cup in uh, 2015 uh, in Germany. And yeah, Germany is really a country that loves indoor. So it was also amazing to, to be there and to feel uh, the atmosphere. So we hope and I think we will uh, have the, the kind of yeah, the same thing uh, in Belgium, also because it's in Liège, so it's near to, um, not so far from uh, Holland and Germany. So I think there, there are going to be people from uh, all over Europe and, yeah, I hope all over uh, the world. But then we'll see uh, with COVID, of course, what's possible. Absolutely. I mean, as you say, you, you played in the 2015 World Cup. What are your overriding memories of that event? Because that, that was quite early on in your indoor career, wasn't it? Yeah, um, I remember we were not expecting actually to be there, but uh, we were in the top two of the of the B division, so that's where we were uh, qualified. And then I remember we played the first game against uh, Germany with a full stadium, and we only lost uh, 4-1. But then we scored, and that was an amazing feeling actually to see that we could compete or kind of compete against uh, the best team of the world also in indoor. Mm. Yeah, I mean, as you say, 4-1, it sounds like a big score. Actually, indoor, it's so fast, it's so furious that you can have, you know, almost cricket scores. You know, you can you can get a lot of goals in a, in a short space of time. How are your team preparing uh, for the next few weeks? Because obviously we've got a Christmas break. Um, obviously, there's also some of the complications around COVID. So how is the team preparing? Yeah, we started training once a week since uh, the month of September. Um, then uh, we are now training two times a week and we'll have, of course, uh, a break between uh, Christmas and New Year. And then we'll have a tournament of three days in uh, Vienne in the first week of uh, January. Then we have the Euro B, actually, in Spain uh, one week later. Mm. And then we have the Belgian playoffs and then uh, the World Cup. So actually, it's going to be one month and a half of yeah, full training and full competition. So... Yeah, we hope to be, of course, uh, fresh for the World Cup and the tired. But I think I'll be really excited to have a lot of training and a lot of time with the team as well. Yeah. Um, we just had two weeks where uh, our coach were positive, so we, we kept training, but then uh, with another coach or uh, sometimes just with the team. And I think we are really mature and we have the, the ability to, yeah, and also, also the motivation to keep training. And yeah, I think we'll... we'll uh, well. Yeah, I mean, it's one of the um, things that just keep happening during every hockey team's preparation, isn't it? There's, you know, sometimes you've just got to take extra measures because of COVID. Um, you know, we've, we've had coaches who've been doing their training by Zoom and things like that. Are there any extra actions that you've needed to take in terms of just bubbling up with a few players or, you know, the, the, the way the way that you travel to matches and things? Have you, have you had to take extra extra measures? Uh, I will not say extra because I think we now live with COVID since one or even two years. So, no, I think we just do the normal stuff and we try to be together as much as possible. Yeah. But then, yeah, of course, when we have the, the briefing, when we have friendly games or something, we try to wear a mask. But it's really usual things now. So um, uh, we will still uh, travel to Vienne, even if it's a friendly tournament. And uh, we'll do yeah, the best preparation possible. To be, uh... yeah. As a goalkeeper, you're obviously very used to wearing a mask. So uh, you've got the advantage over your friends there. <laughs> um, but also as a goalkeeper, uh, we know that you have a big role to play in the indoor game. You, you know, you're very involved in the action, aren't you? Um, how, how do you think the indoor game complements your skills as, a, as an outdoor keeper? Yeah, in the indoor game actually is really uh, fast. So I would say that the ability to understand the game and read the game is, is really important for the decision making. So I think that, yeah, now I just had a period when I played uh, outdoor and indoor. And I felt that my uh, outdoor game was a bit different because I, I was yeah, taking decision much faster. Yeah. So that helps. 
Uh, and then uh, on the other way, I think the the technical parts and the uh, yeah the cons the balance and the consistency, the play of uh, outdoor is really helping in indoor as well because yeah it's also technical. Um, but yeah, I think having a lot of outdoor trainings before going into indoor is also important. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I always think the goalkeepers in indoor are astonishing because you've got so much movement. You've got to be so agile. You're sort of down on the ground and back up again. Um, in, in, in terms of though, just sort of thinking about Belgium and being on the world stage, you're a team that has just been bursting to sort of just reach that top level, aren't you, in terms of both the outdoor and now the indoor game as well. What, what does it mean for Belgian women to be competing on this world stage at the Indoor World Cup? I know it's in your home country, but in terms of the team's development and the team's progress and Belgian women just progressing anyway, what, what does this mean for you? Uh, I think, yeah, it's really um, an honour to play in the, in the World Cup. Um, I think it's important for the visibility of the team. Mm. But actually, it's not the same team in outdoor than in indoor. So, yeah, it will be completely different. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know what to say more, but it's, it's yeah, just for raising the profile, isn't it? You know, actually getting people watching and understanding that you're right up there and, and, and you and your men are both playing on the, on the highest level possible, which is great. Um, can you can you win a medal? You know, what, what are the qualities of your team? Are you are you are you medal winners? Um, yeah, in indoor, I think it will be more uh, difficult. But we, of course, will play the, the tournament to, to win every game. And then, uh, yeah, we'll see if the other teams are better or not. Um, but, yeah, as I said, we don't have the same team outdoor than indoor. So we have different players that are yeah, training differently during the, the season all the year. So, yeah, I think we have quite a good team and we can for sure uh, do a good result. But, yeah, in my mind, if we do a top eight, it's going to be already really nice for the team. Yeah, the top eight, but we're hoping we're hoping it's the top three for you and you get a medal round your yeah. neck. Thank thank you very much indeed. <laughs>